Hi everyone, my name is PK and here I have Tanvir Mahmood who I'm, it's an absolute pleasure to have on because he has been very, very successful, bought four properties in I think literally the last 12 to 13 months and he's just kicked the ball out of the park and in this episode or in this show, I'm hoping that Tanvir will kind of educate and inspire all of us on how to buy properties in quick succession like that, his top tips in buying interstate without a buyer's agent, how to renovate interstate, because that is what he did to build equity. And perhaps his thoughts as a, you know, now a seasoned property investor on the market interest rates in particular markets like Perth, for example. So, you know, with further, without further ado, Danvir, I'm very grateful to uh, have you on. You've been, um, uh, how do I say, so like, you know, I have so many clients, but there are many clients that I take a special interest in because they make the time to ask questions to engage with me. So you're definitely one of them and you've done very well. So congratulations and thank you for being on. Now, thank you, PK, for inviting me. You know, it's honored to be you know, chatting with you. I remember when you come to Melbourne Meetup, I was like, I remember I had to I had work, and then I went straight to see you and catch you. You know, so it's yeah, good pleasure to you know talk to you. <laughs> no, no, it's all it's always my pleasure. So let me just run through your portfolio very quickly and then we'll get into the questions. So the first one um Tanvir bought was actually in Adelaide late last year, which was really good timing. And the fantastic thing about this one, it was bought for four hundred and six thousand dollars in November, the month after he started the course, and the May, so five months later. The May bank valuation was five hundred twenty-five thousand. So basically, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollar up after a twenty-five thousand dollar renovation. So he got you know more than hundred k of equity in basically five months. That was awesome. Then he bought one in the south side of Perth, um, which he bought for you bought for about four twenty. Now valued in the high four hundreds, and I think the yield was about five and a half to six percent. And then you diversified into Queensland. So you bought one in regional Queensland for $435,600, renting for about four sixty, dollars And that had gone up in valuation by $70,000 in just two months, right? So that was great. And this was, keep in mind, now interest rates were rising here. So that was growing despite the interest rates. And the most recent one, once again, in regional Queensland for $415,000, the rent is also really, really, really good at 520, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So now you have four properties across three states in 12 or 13 months. Um, like looking back, I, I guess the first question I want to ask, you know, is like, what drew you to property in the first place? I, I know that you're a IT professional, um, you know, like you, you're living in Melbourne. What kind of drew you to property as opposed to just you know bunkering down really mastering your own trade which is it and growing wealth that way well a very good question pk because i can't believe where i am now if i look back two years or three years you know um as you mentioned i'm an it professional based in melbourne came here back in 2001 and since then i'm always in melbourne um, and uh and I put a wife and a kid. Uh, I was never a financially savvy person, you know, like I, I'm more a lifestyle person. I'd love traveling. I'll go out, you know, spend time with friends. And as you mentioned, like, I think the investment part of it was never thought about. And every time I thought about investment, it was like, I had to spend another 10,000 out of my pocket. That means I have to cut down my holiday. <laughs> you know, those are the thinking that came to my mind every time I was thinking about investment. You know, all those things that you heard, like negative gearing and, you know, the properties you have to manage, you have to spend money and stuff. Um, I think back in 2020, around that, when the COVID started, I think that's when I, I got some time for myself because with commute and everything you know was i was always in a rush before you know never had time for myself i think during that covid time i got some time for myself and i was like 
I read these negative news every day and I just got over it and I was like, I need to do something. And at that stage, I think the first year I spent some time to educate myself on my IT certification. So I did some IT certifications. I got my um, certification done. So that was first six months or second six months of that time. And so after that, I was like, okay, I've done that. I had some money in my account and I was looking at, oh, it's just sitting on my offset. And I'm only getting, I think at that stage it was like a low two or something. <laughs> Nothing was that was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm just getting this much back. Surely I can do something better than this, right? And then I started dive into more in, you know, investment. I was like, okay, let's, let's, I think I, Talked to my friends before, and but never did any research for myself and see what, you know, what can I find? So, and, you know, the normal things came up, those housing land packages where I bought, currently I'm living, and those are the things that was initially coming up. But in my mind, I was always looking for some data-driven things, you know, because one of the concerns, initially I didn't have a strategy or anything, right? Like I was just looking at investment. I had some money. I know that I want to invest where I can get some return back, but I didn't have a strategy on what I want to see it in 20 years or 15 years, right? So for me at that stage, it was only like, okay, let's utilize best what I have. <laughs> so... And I think one of the things when I was trying to book these housing land packages in, you know, west of Melbourne, one of the things that came up was the vacancy rate, right? Like there was a lot of houses happening at, you know, different places around this time. And at that time, I was that beginner that I didn't even know there were sites available to check vacancy rate and stuff. I was trying to dive into find out where the vacancy rate is most and those type of things. Because for me, the main concern was, you know, uh, I need to get <laughs> rent back to pay my mortgage. You know, that's kind of what I was thinking at that stage. Um, and one other thing that happened during that time is I was looking, searching on Google and there's a person came up who, who did an initial call and talked me about Brisbane house and land packages in Brisbane. And that came up because Melbourne, I could see higher vacancy and Brisbane had a lower vacancy. And that drew me to that, you know, the um, person and he did mention about, you know, how, how good the Brisbane market was. And it was a good market, I'm guessing, looking back, you know, around that time to 2020. Um, so I almost signed a contract. I pretty much signed a contract for a house land packages in, in, in Brisbane. I won't name the actual place, but in Brisbane. Um, luckily for me, the bank valuation, when I, you know, I go for the loan, the bank valuation came 115,000 lower than the, wow. you know, what bank valued us. <laughs> and I was like, this person is saying he's selling a lot of these and he knows the market and everything. But here I am getting, and I did it with a number of two different banks. It's not like just one bank, one bank valuer. I did it with, you know, NAV and NZ and you know, I tried to speak with the guys because I was thinking, surely it cannot be that low. But in, in obviously hindsight, but, you know, when I look back, it was like, yes, that property doesn't cost, you know, this much. Yeah. So, and that's when I think I, I think you were talking about that particular suburb or that particular region in Brisbane in one of your videos. <laughs> and that video, like I think my friend shared with me and I was like, okay, let me, let me hear you out. And I think that's how I drew into um, the course and yourself. I remember one night I was just watching 10 or 20 of videos of client stories and all those, you know, things, you know? Yeah. No, it's good. It's good background. <laughs> I didn't know that. So it's like, for me, it's always like interesting to hear like how people hear about me, but also like more, more interestingly, their, their stories. And it's kind of a common theme, actually, Tanvir, like a lot of people initially get enamored by those house and land packages, those people with fancy, you know, marketing tactics, but then it yeah. requires just one or two bad experiences for them to like realize that actually, yeah, you know, there's got to be more <laughs> yeah. to it. The, this is like, you know, this doesn't smell right, so to speak. Um, okay, and so you did the course then. 
Uh, I assume that your your wife was supportive of you doing the course and maybe had to create a business case for her. I'm not sure. <laughs> a lot of people have to do it that way. Um, but my I guess my question is like, you know, even before you bought any properties, once you did the course, like, did you find that you were still you know, confused or you were still in the mode of I'm not sure where to buy or in the mode of analysis paralysis or did everything just all of a sudden, um, you know, fall into place? And this isn't a leading question. So please, please be honest. Like when you did the course between finishing the course and buying your first property in Adelaide, what what was your thought process? So I think just before the course, um, like, all the things that you have shared on your normal YouTube videos and stuff, I knew that what you're talking is right and I could trust on you, you know? That was there, I think, before I dive into your course. The only thing that I was lacking at that stage is trust on myself, whether I can implement what you have in the course, because I knew I didn't have the full background and I was it's very beginner at the end and I didn't know all those terminology and you know all those things so I think that was the main concern and that's where I think I had to um, convince my wife as well because she was saying you sure you can do it or get someone else to do it you know but I think that's where you know I said no I think I can do it you know like yeah I'm hearing all these client stories and I'm hearing that no, I, I should be able to do it. So I think that's where it started. Now, once I dive into the course, I guess once I set a goal up, I'm, I'm reasonably good to follow that goal. And as soon as I did your first week and did that strategy, because I think that was a mind changer for me, because as I was saying before to you, I didn't have a long-term goal for this. Like initially I was like, okay, I had some money. I didn't know about good debt, bad debt, and all those fundamentals things, you know, like how we can leverage and where we can go, you know, with all this. So as soon as I did the strategy, and it sounds to me like, yes, I can do this, you know, whether it's six or there's four or five, I, I, I knew that following that strategy, I can achieve something, whether it's a 50,000 or 100,000 passive income, I could, you know, achieve that. Once I got into my mind and I was like, yes, I can do it. I think I started getting the confidence and obviously um, at that stage started looking at data and Adelaide was hot and I could see that, yes, what you're saying and what we're seeing on the market. Because I was started calling, I think, the first sales agent. I think I finished your course probably in a week time. I was I was trying to rush because I already had a pre approval set up for the other other house I was trying to buy. So I was trying to finish it off, and I started calling these people in Adelaide, and I could see how hard that market was at that stage. You know, so I I knew that yes, I'm looking at the right place, and the data is looking perfect. I have to get in there. I think was the matter was I guess how soon I could get in or whether you know I just because my I think my first four or five offers got obviously rejected I think I was 20,000 30,000 and in some cases even 50,000 lower than what I was offering um, so and from then on keep doing the valuation keep doing the valuation keep talking with the agents and getting there I think was the challenge but um, but yeah it's I think all together from the time I took your course till the day when my first offer got accepted was probably less than a month. Um, so yeah. yeah, that was great. Mind mindset is everything, right? I mean, there's that saying that if you think you can, you can, and if you think you can't, you can't. And like, I feel that what you're saying is that once you set yourself a goal, you are kind of like laser focused, which is yep. what you need in anything in life. And you almost needed to be right, Tanvir, because you you put yourself in the deep end, so to speak, like your first deal um, in Adelaide, Port Nolunga, you bought, you know, people will think about this price now and be like, I wish I bought it at this price of so 406000 um, in Port Nolunga in, in Adelaide. But the reason I'm saying you put yourself in the deep end is that actually it required some renovation. It required a little bit of um, touch up to $25,000 of renovation. Now the property will be worth, I don't know, like well over 550, touching 600 potentially. I, I don't know, maybe even more. But my question to you is like, as a completely new property investor, for everyone who's watching or listening, how did you conduct 
those $25,000 of renovations from Melbourne in Adelaide? Like, did you use a property manager? How, 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 like, you know, what were the mechanics of you doing that? Yeah, so my property manager has been really helpful. So since the time we did the first inspection, second inspections and so on, she already organized a number of quotes um, and everything. Now, luckily for us, the owner uh, herself, and it was during the Christmas, just before the Christmas when we settled. So the the owner had to um, stay for a bit longer. So we got about two, three months time during the Christmas time, and which was good for us because at Christmas have to get, you know, trades and stuff. So we had enough time, but my property manager was organizing different trades. Um, so we had to get some flooring done, roof tilers, plumber. Um, so she provided code. I also get some codes myself, just, just to compare with the code they got. And we worked together and she was like, yes, your code looks good. Or, you know, yes, um, let me speak with that person and see what they've done and stuff. So she was very helpful. And it was one of the property manager I think you recommended in your course as well. I think I contacted two or three different property managers before um, I gave them the contract. But, um, yeah, the, the people I dealt with was amazing. And, um, yeah, pretty much I think there was obviously... That was the COVID time. So there were, I think, a week or two delaying between on, you know, different tradies and different things. But uh, looking at a broader picture, I think that's nothing, you know, like uh, the, the amount of job they had to do and different things they had to organize. Um, I'm really um, thankful to them. Yeah, yeah. And it just goes to show that, you know, you, you managed a renovation remotely. You know, what to speak of, like, buying a property interstate people still think that ah, I, I can't <laughs> trust property managers to do inspections for me uh, i can't you know i need to touch the property i need to be able to drive through it you did that but then you also managed 20 and you're speaking like you're a tradesperson you're speaking like you're a builder i mean you're an it professional i'm not sure you were <laughs> i don't know i might be speaking out of turn but you probably didn't know like what the right type of tile was you know yes. <laughs> same with me like i i'm guilty uh, of it too right but it, it, just with a bit of confidence through education, like none of this is actually that hard. And so then you took that equity or you took that um, experience and you bought in Perth for just over 400. Now it's worth almost 500. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, of course, you followed the course and the data. But, uh, there's one school of thought, Tanvir, that I'm sure you know that Perth is a bad place to buy. And the reason is that in the last 10 years, save and accept the last 12 months, I suppose, it's really not done much. It's kind of been very flat, gone down. Um, it's a mining city, people say. Like, what gave you the confidence to put your hard-earned money in Perth when people around you might have been saying it never grows or it's a mining town? I guess I'll come back to come back to your mentoring group because there was enormous of chat about Perth, you know, like I remember before buying to Perth, I was just looking at, you know, searching for different servers, searching for different places in Perth, and uh, we always have the conversation within the forum, right, like, you know, different mindset, but for me, I guess, was the, the data was looking so good, and if you look at the broader picture, as you mentioned, is in long term, uh, you know, look at Perth's income versus, you know, their, um, their household income was quite higher and everything was matching up saying, you know, it's, it needs to grow, you know, <laughs> looking at all the data points and everything. And, um, and I think at that stage, you also made a YouTube video about Perth in specific about it's not like a, just a mining town anymore. It's the it's diversified, you know, you can see the, you know, different places in each each of these um, council, there are health professionals, there are other workers, it's not like anything can happen, obviously mining has some impact on Perth, but um, it's more diversified than ever before, so um, I think that was one of the main concerns, obviously, I had with Perth is, you know, obviously, we look at the trend back in 2014 and then that time uh, when we had an issue with mining, everything was going down. Is that going to happen again? Uh, but looking at the diversification and everything, it gave me confidence, you know, um, that we are on the right track. 
Yeah. And and anyone can say anything about a city in general, but we can't really buy a city, right? Like we can only buy yeah. one property on one street in one suburb. And you know as well as I do that there are some areas in Perth that have, yeah, not really done much and other areas that have gone up more than 50% in That's the, right. in the <laughs> last 18 months. So markets are then markets. There's always yep. the name of the game. And then you bought a couple in Queensland, which have grown really well. One is a really, really high yielding, I think above 7% um, property. And then the other one has grown by about $70,000 in a couple yeah. of months. I think my last question before we wrap up, Danvir, is um, maybe one or two questions, um, is <clears throat> what are your thoughts on like interest rates um, rising further? Uh, Australia, people are saying, I don't agree, but people are saying we might fall into a recession just like the US or the Euro economy. It's better to keep your money with you, right? Cash is king. Don't invest in property. As a person who owns four properties across Australia, how do you think about the future uncertainties? I think one thing what I've done is I always, you know, check with a different threshold, right? Like I think when I initially started investing it was like low trees or something right now but i always put it six percent and all the different marks and for me as long as with all the highest what we can expect if i put that and if my household income still allows me i'll still go for buy another property you know for so that's kind of the mindset i have at the moment is i know whatever happens is going to be a short term you know in long term it will grow so that i have confidence so even if we have interest in go higher for another year or maybe a few years, as long as you can survive and your household income allows you to do that, um, I, I don't have any issues buying another property you know, now. Um, I have full confidence that in, in long term, it will definitely do well and um, everything will you know, be, uh, you know, everything will be normalized, I guess, um, in yeah. terms of the interest rate and um, property price as well, we pick up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and what I've seen and what the data shows for everyone who's watching as well is there's actually no correlation between interest rates and your ability to make money in property because there's markets within markets. Of course, Sydney's dropping, but as everyone knows, large parts of Perth are rising, large parts of regional Queensland are rising. So really, as you said, Tanvir, the question is, can you afford to keep that property if interest rates, your lending rate, I'm not talking the cash rate, your lending rate becomes 6% or 6.5%, 7%. If the answer is yes, then you should buy property provided you know where to buy. If you have to sell the property when interest rates are 6 or 7%, the lending rate, then that's when you should pause and think, actually, it might not be prudent for me to, to buy property. So that's that's a fantastic mindset. And truly, last question, Danvir, what, what's like your biggest piece of advice for someone, let's say, sitting in Melbourne or Sydney, perhaps they're sitting in the western suburbs or um, they're uh, an IT professional as well, and they're kind of where you were a year, year and a half, two years ago. They're like, well, I've got money in the bank. The future is uncertain but I know properties for me, I'm convinced about property, but I'm just not sure what to do. I'm not actually sure, you know, that I'm getting these house and land packages <laughs> thrown at me. Like what's your biggest advice for someone like that? I am a big believer of education. Um, I know sometimes we get lazy and try and, you know, try to avoid things at certain stages, but I think having the basic education is very key, you know, um, but, because as I was saying, like two years back, I didn't have zero knowledge and slowly I started learning some and then I got addicted to, you know, learning more. So uh, I think now I, I quite like it. You know, I'll, even though I'm not buying actively right now, I still, you know, look at go there, read a blog or, you know, hear podcasts, looking at that. So educating yourself is, is you know, the key. Um, whether you can do it or whether you get someone else to do it, you need to have that education. You need to understand what you're trying to do, you know. So um, invest on yourself, educate, you know. Um, that would be my advice. 100%. 100%. No, well well said. And I think there's a saying or the, a quote by Seneca who said that happiness unshared can scarcely be called happiness. Um, so like when we own something, we should share it, whether it's knowledge, education, or anything else. So 
I'm really appreciative, uh, Tanvir, of of members and clients just like you who, you know, have done very well for themselves, but you're open to sharing it to others, whether it's on this platform or within our own client community platform or with family and friends. You know, that that's kind of like what helps other people. So I'm really appreciative. I know it's a Monday afternoon. Um, <laughs> there might be IT issues going on, but you've made the time <laughs> for me and and all of our viewers. So, yeah, from the bottom of my heart, very grateful. And and once again, big congratulations. Now it's a pleasure to talk to you and share my knowledge with you know other people. <laughs> Well, thank you. And thank you, everyone, for, for watching. So that's Tanvir uh, Mahmood, who's bought four properties in basically 12, 13 months, paying for themselves largely, grown so much. He's also done value-add strategy. Everything is bought interstate without a buyer's agent, without catching a flight, and without wasting his weekends at inspections. I mean, what more <laughs> to be said, but um, I'll post this um, across YouTube and off Facebook. Or if you guys have any comments, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to help. Maybe Tanvir will as well. Hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and do join my Facebook group for engaging and interacting with more people just like um, Tanvir. There's so many that are achieving big goals um, that are happy to help you as well. Thanks for watching. And once again, thank you, Tanvir. Thanks, Peter.